Hi, I'm Mary Beth Stapleton, Manager of Family and Community Partnerships for Hartford County Public Schools. Welcome to the Parent Academy Real Talk on Your Mind Matters. We're focused today on May as being uh, Mental Health Awareness Month, and we're here today with some experts in the field of mental health to help guide parents as you guide your children to mental wellness. I'd like to have our guests uh, introduce themselves, and I'll start with you, Mr. Harbert. Thanks for having us. Uh, my name is Joe Harbert. I'm the Director of Health and Wellness for Hartford County Public Schools. I'm Christina Alton, Mental Health Specialist for Hartford County Public Schools. Hi there, I'm Jennifer Reddy and I'm the Executive Director of Behavioral Health for the University of Maryland, Upper Chesapeake Health and the Klein Family Hartford Crisis Center. Good morning, I'm Angela Gray, I'm the Child and Adolescent Services Coordinator with the Hartford County Local Behavioral Health Authority. Thanks for having us. Well, thanks for being here, everyone. I know you're so busy. I mean, it's Mental Health Awareness Month, so you're very busy. <laughs> but we're here today to talk with parents about, um, first and foremost, what we can do to create uh, mental wellness, um, positivity in our family, and resilience, quite frankly. Um, but that said, we have amazing events coming up this month that we want to share with our families as well. So first things first, um, I want to speak with the both of you about um, what we're hearing across the country. So as parents, you know, we get our phones in the morning, we get our coffee, we sit down, we might see some headlines and some concerning headlines around our, our children and our teens' mental health across the country. So um, with that, what are we seeing in Hartford County? What are we hearing? What are we seeing in our schools when it comes to children and teens' mental health? Uh, on a positive note, Mary Beth, I feel like what we're seeing is how our students are so aware and so interested in mental health. Mm. Um, as an issue in, in, in our wellness needs assessment, it, it was very evident that they want um, adults around them to be aware, they want them to talk about it, um, and they want to talk about it. And, and, and you know, they, they are struggling. The pandemic didn't help, but I think it started before that. Um, social media influences um, and, and being exposed to all of those things and comparing yourself to others. Uh, I think that, you know, mental health is something we all have. Um, I just think we talk about it a lot more now. And I think that some of the behavioral presentations of maybe someone struggling with their mental health are more evident to us and our children are reaching out more and more aware of how they feel and how they want to be supported. So Christina, you talked a lot about, you know, how are we educating our students, how we're we equipping our students with the language they need to be able to understand and define their mental health. And that said, you probably are doing a lot with staff, Joe, right, to help equip them and help them understand student mental health and the importance of it. Yes, we've really had a focus on training staff uh, this past summer and going into the beginning of the school year. We did the brain architecture uh, training for our staff to really help develop their understanding of ACEs and how trauma impacts our students. Um, coming out of that training, uh, we've, we've uh, trained 15 staff members in HOPE, which is Healthy Outcomes from Positive Experiences, which focuses on those PCEs, which are the counter to ACEs, the positive childhood experiences, mm -hmm. and focusing on the positive. So even though students may have dealt with trauma or had trauma in their lives, that those positive experiences really help help overcome some of those experiences. That's great. And that really is that, that positive message, that message of resilience that, you know, all of us struggle, our children struggle, adults struggle, but how do we overcome those challenges? I think that's a great message to share. And then thinking about um, if there is a struggle with mental health, um, really helping equip our parents what would they observe? What are what are some things? We know that there's struggles with children every day as parents, and there's drama every day, right? But what's an extreme kind of situation where parents should probably start to think about maybe getting some assistance? I think, you know, as parents, we understand our children like nobody else does. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, if there's a change, because there are changes, especially in our adolescence, it seems like every day, maybe every minute, that they're different. But I think that when it's sustained over a period of time and it starts to impact their typical day-to-day -day activities, maybe, you know, it's typical for our children as they get older to, you know, spend more time away from us and with their friends, but maybe they're isolating and they're in their room and they're not even choosing to interact with friends. They, they quit activities that they previously enjoyed, which isn't unusual, but what, what we expect is that maybe they're filling that time with a different activity because they're trying a variety of things, but when they, they quit something, and then don't replace it mm -hmm. and they're isolating and maybe where the mood swings and it's weeks at a time and it's interfering with their ability to complete work or impacting their social relationships. So I think we have to think of our child, what's typical for them and then changes that we observe and the 
the impact that it has on their day-to-day -day functioning. Mm, that's a great information. And so with those extreme behaviors, it would probably um, call for some kind of extra help, right? And so thinking about that, um, Jen, if there is a parent who thinks that their child is really having some of those behaviors, you know, they're really seeing that isolation, they're really seeing perhaps they're not getting out of bed, um, you know, maybe they're seeing some physical symptoms. What do they do? What, how do we, where do we start? <laughs> I think the first place to start is, is just talking with them, you know, really seeking to understand, you know, we all have been teenagers at some point in our lives and we know how hard it is. And for our kids, I think it's even more complicated because, um, you know, we've just survived this three year, it feels like forever uh, of a pandemic, mm -hmm. which is life as none of us know. And then the impact of social media, it's just very complicated from how it was when we were growing up. And so, you know, my advice would be talk with them, really help your child um, feel like they have a place, a safe place to talk and not be judged, you know, not, you know, not be, have critical space just so that they can be heard. Mm -hmm. But if at, at that point, knowing your child and you have some concerns, you know, quite frankly, we're very lucky in this county to have the Cotton Family Hartford Crisis Center. Um, much like any sort of physical health, uh, urgent care walk-in center, we have the, the Klein Center for Behavioral Health Symptoms. So if there is anxiety, if there's depression, if, if just things don't seem right, um, you can literally just walk in any day of the year any holiday, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., get in front of a licensed counselor, and just have a second set of eyes on a professional, just sort of, if nothing else, make sure that you're dotting all your I's and crossing your T's and, and providing the support for, for your child. And just to clarify, um, one thing we've heard from parents in, in my circles and, and other places is that crisis, it really is just if there's a behavior that you think is is just off that that right. really can get looked at it right. doesn't have to escalate to the point where it is considered a crisis right 100 percent. okay and i think that's a little bit of a confusion with having the word crisis right. in the name and so really if you can think about it as sort of a behavioral health hub mental health can be very confusing you know even for those of us who have been in the field for many <laughs> years and so we want to take the pressure off of parents mm -hmm. and so you you we we would truly like to prevent a crisis so as soon as as you're starting to have those concerns and those worries it's just a great place to come absolutely don't have to be in crisis um, and, and like I said you know it's a little bit different you know sometimes we think of crisis and you go to the emergency department mm -hmm. and so certainly that's a different sort of experience at the crisis center you're gonna walk right in you're, you're really not going to have to wait you're gonna get in front of a, a licensed clinician like I said and really get some of those answers mm -hmm. And, and and what's interesting and nice, I think, about the crisis center is that it's a collaboration. So you're going to have that clinician working with you as a parent or a caregiver and that young person to sort of come up with a collective plan. Wonderful. Well, that's a great resource. And that said, um, the hesitancy to go to the to the center, you know, parents might feel there's some stigma attached to that, right? I know we're still kind of fighting that, um, but that's okay because we're going to be positive about that and how do we overcome and, and how do we address that. So. You know, Angela, why are parents so afraid to admit that if their child needs that extra support, what what is the issue there? And how do we how do we help parents really embrace this just like they would if there was a, a symptom of a, an infection like a cold or some other kind of physical symptom? Yeah, I mean, talking about mental health can be a challenging topic. Um, stigma plays a huge role in that. Um, and stigma really comes from a lack of understanding or misinformation. Um, there's a lot of stigma around mental health. There's stereotypes, which are typically negative, mm -hmm. and um, that can stop parents from seeking the, the help that their child may need. Um, parents may feel judged because of stigma, and it's hard to admit that your child is struggling um, or your child may need to talk to someone. Um, but when parents can have open, honest conversations with their child, it really helps them to cope better. Um, parents may feel alone in managing mental health challenges or that they're the only ones struggling. Mm -hmm. um, so I would just encourage them to reach out, connect with other families because they are not alone in this. And I think that's something that um to be honest, I think parents, I've heard them say, you know, I might be judged as a parent. Am I considered a bad parent if my child has some kind of an issue with mental health or with substance use? And and I think we're all here to say no. 
no, you're not a bad parent if, you're, if your child got, you know, a, a sinus infection. So you're not a bad parent if you're, you know, so I think that that's really helpful to kind of affirm and, and really help parents understand it's okay. And so let's get that help that we need for our children for sure. And, and just, just to chime in, Mary, yeah. I think it's also important, you know, just like you would take your child to the doctor if they had a, a cold or a broken arm mm -hmm. or something more extreme, mental health is the same way. Mm -hmm. And as a parent, it's our job to sort of help navigate for our children, regardless of what their needs are. And so just to kind of equate that, you know, mental health is very much the same as physical health. So it sounds like we could, we could ask schools for help mm -hmm. if we think we need it. Absolutely. We could reach out to the school counselor mm -hmm. and, and, and contact the school. But but then we could also talk to our child's pedi pediatrician, Correct. right? If we want to be more private and not have it come into the school, that's okay too, right? Yes. Yeah. And if you heard that from parents that they might be, you know, we just want to keep it more private rather than having it in the school. A hundred percent. I mean, and, and I think it's it's personal preference right. for our families. Some feel extremely comfortable coming to us, and you know, schools are seen as a hub for a lot of things. Right. You know, we educate. That's first and foremost our job. But we also have school counselors and psychologists and social workers and all, any number of specialists and and activities. And so. You, Parents and guardians become very comfortable coming to our schools, mm -hmm. but truly, sometimes you don't, again, related to stigma, you don't want folks to know what's going on. It's helpful, though. If we know, then we can support your child in our building. Um, we don't need to know everything, but maybe they're struggling right now. And I think what Jen said is so important. You know, when we think of physical health and mental health, that has to do with our overall wellness. And the more that we link the two, the more comfortable I believe people are talking about it so that, you know, it's not... It's not, oh my gosh, you know, sounding the alarm about mental health, mental health, but it is this overall wellness that we want people to feel, uh, a comfort in talking about it and owning it and also seeking assistance. If we were physically ill, we would go to the doctor. If we're not feeling mentally well, we want to consult a specialist in that area too. Wonderful. And with that positivity, we're about to have a great event in the county um, that's exciting. And um, we just want all of our families to know about that. So Angela, I know that's with your leadership and all of these folks here helping Absolutely. put this together. So we are so excited to have this event for a second year. Um, it's called Your Mind Matters. It's a family wellness night. Um, it's hosted by the Local Behavioral Health Authority, the Klein Family Harford Crisis Center, and Harford County Public Schools. Um, the event is taking place at Lido's Field at Ripken Stadium on Friday, May the 19th. Um, it's from five until nine. Um, it's a free event for families. Um, there'll be lots of resource vendors uh, focusing on mental health and overall wellness, uh, petting zoo crafts, and so much more. So we really hope families come out and join us. So in addition to the, the um, at the stadium, we have free parking, right? You can just park and just go right on into the yes, venue. Yes, absolutely. Perfect. And I'm excited to share that Harford County Public Schools is providing free transportation uh, from all points in the county. We will have that information posted as well. Um, and we will have a lot of Harford County representation from different departments. We'll have shared on the website. Wonderful. So we'll have all that up for the website. We'll link it to the to the video and parents can see it. Perfect. Absolutely. Very good. Well, thank you all so much for being here for your leadership in mental health across the county. Um, I know personally, I just so value you and professionally too. And I know all of our parents across the district know our children are in good hands and we have the support we need. So thank you for your time. And thank you parents for joining the Parent Academy Real Talk on Your Mind Matters. We'll see you next time.